living longer and staying healthier. It's Healthy Talk with Dr. Michael Smith, MD. Here's your host, Dr. Mike. So we're going to talk about foods not to feed to your pets coming up. Um, I know a lot of my listeners are pet lovers, and I am too. And just because it's good doesn't mean it's good for your pet. <laughs> I had to learn that foods that are perfectly suitable for humans and, and maybe even other animals could be, can be very toxic even or even poisonous to your dog, your cat, your your bird, and can really pose some serious threats to their health and well-being. And I'm here with the pet expert, Dr. Jeff Werber. He's he's the vet to pretty much everybody famous, I think, from what I can understand. Hardly hard really everybody with this. <laughs> It's just about everybody. Uh, he's going to discuss with us. What, uh, hopefully, Dr. Werber, first of all, welcome to Healthy Talk. Hopefully, you can help us to just clear all this out. Let me let me give you a quick little story. So I, I'm here with Dr. Jeff Werber, and um, I have a dog, right? Uh, she's a Border Collie uh-huh. mix. What a what a blessing and everything. And I, I listen, I made the mistake once. I, I fed her grapes a lot. I, I had no idea that there might be an well, issue you know, with dogs you know, it's, and grapes. Interestingly, the thing... You know, the raisins and grapes, nobody knew. It was, it, it's like it was a new I did thing. it. <laughs> it kind of happened accidentally. And, and I'm in the same boat. It, you know, what better treat to ask your dog to sit, right? And you toss a grape yeah. up in the air and they catch the grape. It's fantastic. Well, listen, and, do- um, Dr. Werber, I used to, I see, I, I like to freeze grapes. So, it, I don't uh, know, it's like a little popsicle treat. And she loved the cold grape, I don't know, it was kind of refreshing to her, and I gave her a lot, and she did get some kidney insufficiency, and I told him, I told really? my vet, I was like, I, you know, yeah, she got, it was, it was, it was mild, she got, him, got her off the grapes, and that was several years ago, and she's fine, so let's do this, I want to talk about dogs, cats, and birds, because that's the, the most of the pets, and, and hopefully you can just, if you can, lay it out for us, foods definitely in each one of those, let's start with dogs, do, do you okay. know what what are some other foods that I cannot give to Edie? I don't want to hurt her anymore. Okay. All right, so some of the foods. Let's talk some of the you know the biggies that everyone knows about. Well, now everyone knows about raisins and grapes, and I found out as well. Um, I had sent a case. Well, a case went into an emergency, and they called me on uh, from the emergency center. They wanted to flush them out and put all because the dog got a trail neck wow. with like five raisins in it. And I, Amazing. so I, I said, raisins, come on, I give dog raisins grapes all the time. So anyway, this was probably about maybe six or seven years ago, as we were just learning that not every dog is sensitive to the toxin in raisins and grapes. Uh, they think it's some part of the prosenthiatins, which are actually healthy for us, and they're in right, the right. grape and raisin skin, and it's, a, it's, a, it's an idiosyncratic reaction that some hmm. dogs have, but there's no way to test which dogs have it or not. So the, the, the so it's, it's not so it's not the seed. It's not the right, seed. Exactly. It's the pulp. It's the it skin of the pulp. The and, wow. Okay. And therefore, it's raised in grapes. And some even think in some cranberries. So the key is what they're recommending now is to just don't feed them, because as you right. had a hard way, it, it, it does uh, affect the kidneys and is a, quite the kidney toxin. Um, so that's our recommendation. Other things that we think around the house, you don't even think twice about, chocolate. Now, a lot of people hear about chocolate. Now, because chocolate has, you know, everybody knows about it, I'm getting calls and say, you know, my dog ate a Hershey's Kiss or my dog ate an M&M. No, no, no. no. <laughs> We're talking the, the really toxic chocolate, and there's an ingredient in chocolate called theobromine that, comp- that competes at the binding site. And it can cause actually some neurotoxin, some nerve toxin. And uh, it, it, it obviously most concentrated in pure baker's chocolate, unsweetened, okay. dark chocolate. And, you know, depending on the size of the dog, they wouldn't have to eat a lot. I mean, obviously, a, a size, something the size of our kiss is not going to be a problem. As you get okay, into so, the so, semi-sweet and then ultimately yeah. the milk or the chocolate in the chocolate chip cookie or in the chocolate cake, they'd have to eat. I mean, let's put it save it from me. But they okay. They okay. Would, so so we don't we don't have lot. to we don't have to panic. So if your dog gets into a little They'll bit of the wrap. cake or gets in, we we don't have to panic. You're gonna be okay. Right. It's the it's the right. unprocessed chocolate we're talking about. The real dark that that's the issue. Anything else exactly. with the dogs before we move yeah. over to cats? The xylitol. The xylitol. Have, I don't know if a lot of you have dogs. One of my five dogs will go into a, a purse <laughs> and steal anything that is remotely edible, including gum <laughs> and xylitol. <laughs> 
Yes. It's an active ingredient. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the sweetener, the artificial sweetener that's in a lot of breath mints, a lot of chewing gum, and xylitol can be very toxic to dogs and cats as well. Again, so, it's is it, the kidney. Is, is it just coming down to... So it looks like most of the effect of these, of these poisons for dogs is, is really affecting the kidney. Is it just coming down to their inability to metabolize these well, compounds that we as humans they can? The same, they don't have the enzymes, and it's also a lot of these things to be liver toxins. You know, we, we also have, um, again, people don't know about this, but raw um, onions and garlic, all right? So that's why, interestingly, wow. one of the baby foods out there, because, you know, we use a lot of baby foods, to treat okay. uh, uh, little puppies and kittens, especially those that are just recovering from disease. And one of the major brands, I'm not going to mention the name, used to have onion powder in them, and they actually mm. were losing sales to the veterinary world because of the onion powder. And they took the now, onion I, powder I, out. Dr. Werber, I never, I've never... See, there's another one. I, I, I think I've heard of the onion, but you said garlic. I don't think I've ever heard of that before either. So these are, these are new yeah, things raw, for me. Now, but, we... We were all one, so we could talk about dogs the whole time because I'm a dog. That's what I. All my pets have been dogs, but I know I have a lot of cat lovers that listen to my oh, show cat, too. So right. let's and, let's and move I, into I, cats. Cat Is there lover, anything specific well. there? Yes, yes, I'm a cat lover as well. I have eight of them. Uh, oh wow, that, that's mind. a cat lover. <laughs> yes, yes, and they're amazing. So the things that, that I would say, you know, first of all, you got cats like to get into things, but cats. Let's talk about the, the things that they can ingest. Be very careful with lilies. Lilies, not only the flower okay. itself, but if you have a lily in a vase and they get to the water that leaks down from the vase, that could kill a cat. All right? Wow. Very okay. dangerous. And another thing that will also, I mean, we don't like using it in dogs either, but it's not deadly, deadly, but acetaminophen, the active ingredient of Tylenol, will kill okay. a cat. So be very careful, and, and I, I, it's the weirdest thing in the world, but they literally, they will, their cells will get no oxygen, even though they're breathing fine, even though their lungs look gorgeous, all right? You, they, they are, and that's, they from are the, that's from the acetaminophen. This is from that's the acetaminophen, acetaminophen you're talking about, yeah. They get met, it's called met hemoglobinemia. What happens is met hemoglobin, which comes, what happens when they start, when they ingest the acetaminophen, replaces the hemoglobin, and therefore the hemoglobin can no longer bind to the cells, the red cells, which is what carries oxygen. So these cats will literally, their tongues will look like a Sharpay or a Chow Chow. Blue as blue can be, and they have, they, they have get, they're getting no oxygen. It is the scariest thing on earth. And uh, be very careful. And for some reason, don't ask me why, because I find them to be bitter tasting, but I've seen cats over the years that have actually munched on an acetaminophen tablet. So you've got to be very careful. Um, but yeah, and you got to be careful with the. I'm not a. I'm not a cat. I don't have cats as as pets, but I know that they're very curious. They're going to get into a lot uh, of things, right? So you got to be very careful. Keep the purses maybe higher up or whatever. How whatever you got to do to keep that kind of stuff away from them, right? Exactly. You know why? Because cats also love and are intrigued by string, whether it's dental floss that you kind of toss in your bathroom trash, not even thinking twice about it, or if you're a knitter, the the, the classic cat playing with the ball of yarn. What happens is if they start eating this stuff, they will continue to ingest. And then what will happen is sometimes the yarn will get stuck at the base of their tongue, and it will cause a plication of the intestinal tract, sort of like the intestinal tract will look like an accordion with no place right, to okay. go, and then it cuts off the blood supply, and it is a potential deadly disaster. So, you so Dr. Very, Weber, very there's, there's, so, there's so many other things we could talk about here. Is there, real quickly, we got about 10, 20 seconds left. Is there a f your favorite resource that people could go to that you trust with this kind of information? Actually, you can go to Pet Health Network, uh, which is a great site that has, you can, uh, you can log on to, um, actually, ProSense Pet also has okay. uh, links to various sites. And one thing, you mentioned birds real quick, just to say a quickie about birds. If you have a real bird, fast. especially the, the citizens, don't let them perch and stay in the kitchen if you're cooking with Teflon. All right, we got we to live it there. No Teflon. This is Healthy Talk on Radium D. I'm Dr. Mike. Stay well. <laughs> 